Um, this is going to be a rough poem. I took along to my writer's group, and it's not that funny. And I'm going to try and read it with the corrections of one of the people. Like, you start out roughly, and you get better towards the end. It's called Gold History Near Bendigo. We meet in a shearing shed, 129 McNamaras and McGraths, from 1851 when John planted Allen a kitchen garden. Winter is a gathering, a book launch. Everyone mostly drives good cars. The French mother of my children is there, my current, as is my current girlfriend. She could have been at lunch with her ex-union pals. I have a tooth issue and my breath is bad. Incidents and social history over long are read out badly. The mayor of Bendigo is there. Don't insult politicians. This is what their life is like. The light is weak and his speech fumbles. We used to get our sheep sheared in this shed. Now a ruin, more the smell of sheep shit than the warm smell of lanolin. As the wind rises, the Golvo sheets clank. Three blue dogs on chains bark. It is unbelievable that this landscape, stones and dirt, could have had my father bending over, sneezing repeatedly from the richness of the grass. The McGraths sees the history of Frank Hubert McNamara VC as their own for the book. The co-author will be in Canberra next week. It's the 100th anniversary of Gallipoli, third cousins, what bastards they are. Dad cried on the night the radio said he died. We had to be silent when the news was on. We knew what we were separated from, the only comfort we had, the slow combustion stove in the kitchen and the open fire in the living room. Mally roots, twisted, gnarly stuff. The chimney was imperfect. Smoke got in our eyes. The wallpaper had gold twists in it. Were we living in Regency perfection? No. <laughs> That's the end of that. Thank you. <laughs> Nolan Terrell said at um, a gig here, he's, he's, he's wanted to give lessons in how to you know, perform, and he had one little trick. I thought, my God, I've got to learn that one, which is when you finish the poem, and they don't know you're finished because it's an inconsequential tale, and they've got no fucking idea what you're carrying on about. Sorry, that's weird. Uh, what you've got to do is you've got to go back like that, which tells the audience... That's done. Clap. <laughs>